I'll tell you, Panner in there, who's yeah, now yeah. signed for the Rangers. Was he, he actually, was he special? I, I, actually, I got a funny story about Art and Tanarin. He, he, he saved me in Russia. Um, I'm not sure if you guys watch the videos much, but there's a video of me and uh, Jeremy Oblonsky getting into a I fight. Was gonna, I was going to get into this later. I'm, I'm pumped about this. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's talk about it right now. Though. Let's do it. But, but anyways, I mean, uh, and we never really did get to tell our side of the story, but it, it wasn't a wedding. It was a, it was a club. And it was our first. It was our first two weeks, I think, in Russia, and uh, you know we we were in. Can't even remember what city we were in, but anyways, uh, you know the, the 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 tournament was over. It was an exhibition tournament. It was over, so uh, our coach told us, you know, he said you guys can go out and have some fun tonight. You did good, you know, go have some 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 beers, and so we went out. It was a Sunday night, I think, or Saturday, and we went for supper. We went bowling, you know, and, and vodka over there. Those fucking Russians love their vodka, so. Of course, we're drinking vodka, and you know, you know, it was time to go to uh, to a club, and the club didn't open till midnight. And it was about eleven thirty at night, so you know, we're standing outside of this club waiting to get in, and uh, you know, me and Jeremy Oblonsky, we 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 kind of drew a lot of attention. You know, we're both pretty big guys, and we have black eyes, and I had a mohawk, so you know, right away the fans the fans noticed who we were. So you know, they're all around us, and you know, a little bit later on. Push came to shove with uh, a couple of our players. Uh, the smaller guys were getting pushed around by these fans, and they were—they they didn't like us because we spoke English. They were assuming they, oh, those guys were Americans. So, um, you know, I kind of backed it up because I didn't want to be—I didn't know where I was. I didn't want to get shot or anything. So I kind of stayed <laughs> out of the crowd for a while. But then eventually, a couple of guys, a wedding party had came and started picking a fight with. Uh, it was actually uh, Kip Brennan and. Uh, our, one of our goalies. So of course Jeremy went in to intervene to stick up for our players, and then he looks huge in the video as well. Yablonski yeah, looks massive. Yeah. So, anyways, three guys jumped on Yablonski, and I mean Yablonski's a good friend of mine. So as soon as as soon as three guys jumped on Yablonski, I jumped in, and that's when all hell broke loose. All I remember was when we were done, there was about five or six guys all laid out on the on the cement, knocked out cold. And I remember looking at Jeremy and saying, like, let's get the fuck out of here. You know, I don't want to get shot or... So we start we start leaving, and then sure enough, uh, uh, some guy suckers me, so I knock him out, then Jeremy knocks a guy out, and we're leaving this place, trying to walk away, and the cops come. So Jeremy and all the Panarin and all those other guys took off running, and I was the last guy, so I, I just stopped and put my hands up because the cops were behind me, and I said, you know... So the cops came and actually cuffed me up and were... Uh, trying to arrest me and then Panarin turned around and come back and saved me he come back and I mean at that time our, he didn't speak English and I didn't speak Russian so all he looked at me was saying money 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 and I said okay well I got you know I had about 500 Americans in my in my pocket in my pocket so I took my wallet out and I gave the cop the money and he said have what? a good day see, see you later so <laughs> but it, but if it wasn't for Panarin I, I would have been fucking in some jail in the middle of Russia <laughs> there's two things in that video that I loved I loved that the fans were like shouting Mo Rusty <laughs> like, like in the background as you guys were just dusting guys on the street and the yeah, other one yeah. was a guy in a blue jersey he, he comes in and he kind of tries to sucker punch Jeremy and then he runs past and it kind of all dies down and as he's walking past he turns to say something to you he's facing the other way and Jablonski hits him from the side and oh yeah. my God, the the guy just folded in half like yeah it was it was it was quite quite an experience i mean i have some stories there that have never came out that were wild i mean but again over there you know that's a, that's another place you know that that year i played the one year in, in um that was in uh Vitez Chekhov, and we had a we had a really tough team in our in our and our owner there had some ties to the mob as well so it was uh quite the experience um another funny story that people don't know about is i fought Josh Grant when I was in Russia because Grattan had played for the team the previous year, but it was kind of funny because at that time my wife was uh, was pregnant back in New York, so my daughter was born and I had flew home to New York for a week to be with my wife, and then I flew back to uh, to Moscow, and we had this big game against um, it was against Barisa Stana, my my the, the team I played for the next year, but anyways. They wanted to make sure that we had a tough team for Astana because Astana had Chris Simon and they had Josh Gratton. Yeah. So you know they so they said 
they wanted to make sure that we had me, Yablonski, and Kit Brennan on our team. We, they wanted to make sure one of us was there. So, anyways, I uh, I remember we played them in about a week. But my wife had called me, and she was having trouble back in New York with the, with the newborn baby. So I, I went to the, to the owner of the team, and I just said, listen, you know, I need to get back to New York to spend time with my wife. You know, can I go for a, a week or two? And I mean, so, but with with the understanding that we were playing Astana the following Friday, but he said, yeah, it will be okay. We still got Jeremy Yablonski and we got Kip Brennan. So yeah, go ahead and, and deal with your family. So meanwhile, I flew all the way back to New York. And when we're talking about a flight, we're talking about a 14-hour flight, right? So all I remember is I flew all the way back to uh, to, Sierra, to New York to spend time with my wife. And I was only there for 12 hours. And I remember turning on Sportsnet, and I was that I don't know if you guys remember the the game where Jeremy Yablonski and Kip Brennan got a lifetime suspension in the KHL. Yeah. yeah. So I was I was watching that at about midnight, and I'm like, holy fuck, these guys are pretty rank, and they're saying, you know, Jeremy's going to take a big suspension, and so is Kip. Sure enough, three o'clock in the morning, my Skype. This is that. This is the Skype that I. This is why I still had Skype. Was that's how we used to call people. So anyways, I got a, a phone call at 3 o'clock in the morning, and it was from Jeremy Oblonsky. He's like, hey, Sasha's trying to get a hold of you. And Sasha was the boss man's son, and he spoke English. He was about 19 years old. He's like, Sasha wants to get a hold of you as soon as possible. Make sure you answer your phone. So about 10 minutes later, my Skype rings again, and it's Sasha. And he's like, hello. He goes, my father tells me you have to be back in Russia tomorrow. And I just got <laughs> And I just and I just got to New York. I've only been in New York for like twelve hours. So imagine me telling my wife, "Hey, I gotta leave." You know, I've only been here for twelve hours. So three o'clock in the morning, I'm I'm on the phone. I'm in Syracuse, New York, because that's where my wife was going to school, and that's where she had her baby, my daughter Ava. So at three o'clock in the morning, I'm looking for flights to get back. And this is like Wednesday night. So, and you got to remember, Russia's almost twelve hours ahead of us. So this is Thursday night, Thursday in in Russia. So I'm looking for flights, and I can't find. It's three o'clock in the morning, and I can't find a flight out of Syracuse. But I I found a flight out of Rochester, which is about an hour away from from Syracuse. And I remember thinking, "Fuck it, fifteen thousand dollars," because there was they only had one flight left, and it was uh it was first class. And I'm thinking, so I call Sash. I said, "I found a flight, but it's it's fifteen grand." I said, "I don't want to fucking waste fifteen grand on a flight." And he just said, "Buy it." My father will reimburse you, but you need to be here. So anyways, Talk. long long story short is I buy this flight, so I have to get a ride from Syracuse, New York, to Rochester. I get to Rochester at like 6 in the morning. I board the flight. I fly from Ro- Rochester to JFK. And I fly, I fly from JFK to Warsaw, Poland. But that's the, that's a long flight that flies over the Atlantic Ocean. So I'm flying, and I end up getting to... Uh, Warsaw late. I missed my connecting flight to go to Moscow. Fuck. And you got to remember now it's now it's it's Friday morning or Friday afternoon. Game day, right? In, in game day, and I'm still flying across the ocean. And then uh, I remember landing in Warsaw, and I missed my connecting flight. So I call Sasha again. I said, Sasha, I missed my flight. He goes, Try rebook whatever you can do. So I ended up having to book a book of flight from Warsaw, Poland, to Saint Petersburg, Moscow, or Saint Petersburg. And then from St. Petersburg back to Moscow. But I was going to be late. It was going to be like 5.30 p.m. And our game's at 7 p.m. So I remember I, I uh, so I went to St. Petersburg. And when, I, when I was in St. Petersburg, they said, don't even grab your luggage. Just run outside and there'll be a vehicle waiting for you. So I land in Moscow and it's like 5.30, 6 o'clock. And I mean, I, I'm in Moscow airport, but I'm in Moscow. is kind of like New York City. I mean, the traffic and all that on a Friday afternoon is is pretty bad so anyways like i land in moscow i don't even grab my luggage i run outside and there's a secure there's a limousine waiting for me with two cop cars in front in the back of the limousine <laughs> so i'm like holy you know so i jump in and i remember we were going through through moscow we have to go to vita uh, to Chekhov, and the cops are escorting us through the traffic and uh i pull into i pull into the rink at about it was about 6 30 p.m and all I remember was I had to, uh, there was a rule in the KHL that you have to dress in warm-ups to be able to play in in the game. Yeah. So I, I, I ran in and the team's already on the ice warming up and there's, you know, the rink's packed because this is a big game where the, both teams have two, you know, big heavyweights. So I remember getting, and you got to remember, I've been flying for 20 hours now, right? No sleep, nothing. 
So I let, I, I'm getting dressed. I remember Yablonski's helping me get dressed while I'm getting ready to get on the ice for, get on warm-ups. And then I remember there was about a minute and a half left for warm-ups, and I stepped on the ice, and I got, there was, the rink was packed, and I got a standing ovation. I did two laps, and then I got off the ice, and when I got into the dressing room, I fell to the ground, and I puked everywhere, because I was so high on adrenaline, and, you know, I just was yeah. traveling across the world. So then... Nazarov, our coach, calls me into the office. He goes, "Well, John, we flew you across the ocean to fight one, to fight, and that's it." So he says, "Are you ready?" I said, "Yeah, let's get it over with." So, very first shift when Josh Gratton goes on the ice, I jump on the ice, and uh, you know, I give him a little tap and say, "Well, you you ready to fucking go or what?" And he didn't want to fight me, and I'm like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" I flew across the ocean to to fight. <laughs> Long story short, as we fight, and I. I, I would say I, I beat him up pretty good. I mean, you can watch it on YouTube. So all I remember is I served my five minutes in the penalty box. And then I come back, and this is only the first period, like the first five minutes in the game, and I serve the penalty. I go back to the bench, and I look at Nazarov. I say, well, let's fucking do it again. I'm too tired. So then I go fight Josh Gratton again, and the second time I really beat him up. I put both his eyes swollen shut. <laughs> And uh, so I was kicked, I think in the cage, I was only a two fight rule. So I was kicked out of the game. And uh, all I remember was I fucking flew across the ocean for those two fights in about 10 minutes. And after that, I partied with the owner for about two days. And then he flew me back to uh, New York for a week. And I got, got to come home and visit my wife for about a week, week and a half. They reimbursed me my flight and gave me 25,000 American just for doing it. Plus my salary. So uh, it, it was, it was a, a trip across the ocean, well well worth it, but it was, uh, you know, that's a story that most people don't know, that I, I flew across the ocean just for that one. We hope you enjoyed that clip from one of our prior 4,000 and counting episodes. You can catch the rest of the episode on all your favourite platforms. Now, don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, put the notification bell on, and you will be getting more 4,000 and counting clips right to your YouTube channel.